Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nick Pizzi and uh, I'm a software developer at Polymer and uh, that's my Twitter handle, my, my GitHub repo, uh, specifically my dot files. So I'm going to talk about Vim today because Vim is awesome and I love it and Markham's about sharing your passion and as my coworkers will tell you I'm passionate about Vim and not IntelliJ. And, <laughs> so get started here. So why am I talking about Vim? Or why do I love Vim, I guess? I feel like IDs are a little too bulky. So, I mean, I do a lot of JavaScript, so they don't help me a whole lot. My coworkers will disagree again. Um, they're hard to configure. And uh, an example of this is yesterday in the office, that guy was trying to add the tomorrow theme to, uh, to IntelliJ. And he, was in, he had to install a jar file to do that. All I had to do was just copy it over to my uh, callers directory in my .vim uh, in my home directory and I was done. But his the jar file didn't have the right XML file in there and there's your first hint of... <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't spell, but sharing configuration is easy. <laughs> I don't have to package everything up into jar files. My files are out there on GitHub. You can go fork them, look at them, play with them. And uh, finally, I'm passionate about it. Um, I watched a talk, I think, from FluidCon uh, of this year, where Paul Irish said that you need to be a zealot about your development environment because you're gonna you spend, you spend your life in there, and you need to to uh, be passionate about it. And um, I'm passionate about Vim. So. Woo! Um, I've been doing Vim, using Vim full time for about six months now. Um, yeah, I, I was using Sublime Text before that, and just thought I'd give it a try, and uh, haven't looked back yet. And I'll talk about how I got started a little bit. So learning, uh, go look at people's dot files uh, on on GitHub. There's lots of them, but don't just copy them. Just use them as a reference. Um, you can also watch Vimcasts, which are some great screencasts. Uh, out there, they're, uh, they haven't been updated in a while, but they, they're very helpful, and the guy who did those, I, I can't remember his name, but uh, he wrote a book uh, that's uh, on pragmatic programmers now. Uh, Vim Golf is another great great site. You can go there and install this Ruby gem, and, uh, and then it gives you some problems. Actually, I have the site right here. Here's the Vimcast site. And there's, uh, hasn't been, oh, I guess there was one in 2012 about Vim Golf. Um, and then here's the Vim Golf site. So you can, uh, you can read that. You can gem install this Vim Golf uh, Ruby gem and then run the setup and then uh, look through this site and find a challenge ID and put it in there. And then what it'll do is it will give you Vim with a vanilla Vim RC so you can't cheat with your own shortcuts and whatnot. And, uh, it will record the, the amount of keystrokes that you're doing to solve the problem. So it'll give you like a before and an after. <laughs> and you try to do it in the fewest Constant. amount of keystrokes. And it's, it's pretty tough. And there's some pretty, uh, pretty crazy solutions out there. You can also go through the site and find the solutions that people used, uh, which can help you a lot just seeing uh, about, about shortcuts that you didn't know about. So. about Vim Tutor. Yeah, and that's true. Vim Tutor is, that's just, uh, Vim Tutor. Just type it in to command line. And, uh, yeah, it's really well documented and search, you can search it really well. Uh, also, just when you're in Vim, um, you can just say help and give it a uh, give it something to search for. So I searched for split, went right to it. There's also some uh, Easter eggs in there. I think if you do help 42, what's the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? So Vim has all of the answers. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the next thing is kind of going over my workflow a little bit with Vim. 
So I use Terminal Vim on my Mac, and I run it inside of Tmux. Is that, can everyone see that? Um, so I like running it inside of Tmux because I get those tabs at the bottom, and I can sw quickly switch between different things, connect and uh, disconnect from that instance, close my, my terminal, and bring everything up right as I had it. And uh, I can also do splits, so I can have uh, maybe a 75-25 split and then be running tests down here or doing my git commits, uh, everything from right there. And um, I also display what song I'm listening to on Spotify in there. Pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, I run term terminal room. <laughs> Tmux, and uh, one big shortcut uh, that really helped me a lot was remapping uh, caps lock to control, uh, both for Tmux and for Vim. It just made it a lot easier, especially on the Macs where the function key is in the bottom left. It's hard to get to control for me at least. So do that. You can do it straight through the, the OS X preferences. Uh, so some tips on getting your VimRC started if you don't have one is start blank, don't copy someone else's, and don't use Janus. Go look at Janus and go look at other people's, but don't just copy them because uh, you want to do what works best for you. So you may, people will set up their own shortcuts that may not make sense to you, so look at what they're doing and then maybe create your own shortcuts from there. Uh, <clears throat> and be picky about what you add, uh, both in your MRC and what plugins you add because it just adds a lot of extra to to uh, trying to remember those those key bindings and uh, like setting your your VIM or setting up your dot files on other machines it gets a little more difficult the more plugins you add and stuff. So uh, here's some of my favorite shortcuts. Favo I, God, I can't spell. Yeah. Yes. Did you do this presentation? Yes. <laughs> Is there a spell checker? I haven't used one. I don't need spell checker, clearly. <laughs> I think there is. I think there is. I know IDEs usually have them. Though. Right, yeah. I, I think there is. Yes, uh, there is. Yes. There is, yeah. I haven't used it, though, obviously. <laughs> um, the first thing I would add to your dot files is this, um, or into, into your VimRC, are these lines, which just disable the arrow keys. So it forces you to use HJKL uh, to get started, and then. Um, you can add them back in. I've added them back in now, but I hardly use them. And uh, yeah. Um, the next one is the splits. I have this in my VimRC, uh, which is a function. I can't remember where I got this from, otherwise I would sort of cite the source. But um, I like to split my panes a lot and have lots of different uh, files open and, uh, for viewing. And I like to switch between them fast. And I, I can't do the SP, colon SP, or colon VSP, and then control WW or whatever to switch between them. So adding this lets me um, use my leader key, oh, I'm sorry, control HJKRL to move between each of the splits. And uh, if there's not a split to move into, it splits over there. So I'll give an example of that. So here's my VMRC. Um, actually, I won't do that. Here's my VimRC, and then if I want to create a split to the right, I can just hit Control L, and then to go back, I can hit Control H, so I can switch between the two. Now, if I hit Control H again, because there's not a, a buffer over, or a split over there that that I can move into, it'll just split again. Same thing for going up and down, so I can just endlessly create splits with ease and close them quickly as well. I mapped K to close. So that helps quite a bit uh, in moving around. Then, uh, those are the only ones I had in there for that. Plugins. Uh, plugins are pretty great. There's lots of resources out there. Uh, the first one I would recommend installing is Pathogen, which just lets you easily load other Vim plugins. And uh, so in my VimRC, I've installed Pathogen 
um, right here, I, I pull in pathogen, um, and then I call pathogen infect. And what it does is, I'll create a, here's my bundle directory. So um, in, for pathogen, in your .vim uh, directory, in your home directory, uh, it creates a bundle, you can create a bundle directory and then put folders in there so you can keep all of your plugins separate in their own folders instead of throwing everything into plugin or auto load, whatever the, the folders are, colors. And so these are all the plugins I have installed and uh, my dot files are out on GitHub so these are just Git submodules and then I can just do git submodule init and update and it will just automatically add these on whatever machine I'm cloning uh, my dot files to. And so by running that pathogen infect, it will go through and just load all of these so I don't have to worry about, about them being loaded at all. And then in my uh, VimRC, I have this array that I can add plugin names to to disable them or I could just remove them from the bundle directory either way and they won't get loaded. So that's, that's a really nice plugin. Um, the next one is NerdTree. Uh, I use this quite a bit. Um, NerdTree gives me a directory structure on the left that I can go up and down in and I can uh, like open, open uh, directories in there. I can create new files and then open them. Uh, I've mapped it to leader K so I can just quickly open and close it. I can delete files, Oops. and uh, and so it's really nice for that. I do a lot of file management right here, right from within Vim with NerdTree. Do you let you undo stuff? Uh, like, like say delete the wrong thing. No, but I I can just go go to uh, here and do a checkout again. Okay. Um, The next one is uh, Control P. So if you if you don't know where a file is, but you know the file name, uh, it's it's like Command T for TextMate, the, the Command T uh, command. And so I can just hit uh, Leader T is what I mapped it to, and then it gives me a list of all the files, and I can fuzzy search for it. So if I want to open my JS Hint RC, I can just start typing that, and it'll open right away. It also has a um, a buffer, like this lists all of the open buffers that I have right now. And then there's also a most recently used, so it, you can search by by files that you've used uh, most recently. Um, and then another plugin is Syntastic. And uh, that is really nice, uh, especially I'm working with JavaScript a lot. And uh, I use JS Hint um, to lift my code. And I use Syntastic to um, run my JS, to check my JS hint RC, check all files against my JS hint RC, I'm sorry. So in my, um, I have this project called Comb, uh, which is a, an open source project that Paul and works on, and I can open up a file in here. Open up binary tree, and immediately I can run, and you'll see I got that uh, bar on the left side with those two arrows. So if I go down to that line, uh, it tells me right here that I'm missing use strict in there because in my JS hint RC, I told it that I care about using strict. And so it easily tells me, and, and so if I just go change the code, can't spell, obviously. Oops. Oh no, I'm sorry. It goes away in that instance, but there's still something uh, bugging it. So I can see that right here, it expects me to use two equals. And it does this for all sorts of different files. So um, uh, uh, right out of the box, like we use less a lot, and it will tell me uh, problems with my less code, um, where if I'm, if I'm missing variables that are in another file, it'll yell at me for not importing that file and, and such. Uh, so it does it for a, a lot of languages right out of the box, which is really nice. 
And um, so that was fantastic. Another one that I forgot to add on here is uh, Fugitive. Fugitive is Git support for Vim, which is really nice. You can do uh, you know your Git write uh, or uh, Git commit, check out, uh, diff, everything right in there. I can do a, I think it's gblame on this file, and I can, uh, it'll open up a split with telling me who changed what, what line right away. So you can you can do all of your your Git, uh, you get things right from the beginning. Um, one thing that I do to kind of keep track of, of all of these, these plugins and all of the shortcuts that they bring in and everything is I pick six or seven things that I don't know how to do, but I know them or the plugins that it provides can do. And I write those down on a note card and just keep them on my desk. And then after I memorize all of them, I throw that away and do seven more and just keep doing that. And so I'm, I'm currently working on the fugitive ones and uh, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but there's a lot that you can do with that. <clears throat> um. So then, uh, my final slide is just share. So as you're learning, just uh, create a .files repo on GitHub and throw your, code, throw your, uh, your config out there, uh, blog about it, and be proud of your environment setup. Are there any questions? <laughs>